The i7-870 launched in 2009, and despite the 900 series launching a year earlier, this was really the first consumer i7 that launched. The 900 series was really a, a server chip that was retrofitted for high-end desktop platforms and workstation PCs. With the 800 launch came with it better TDP, better turbo boost, a new socket, and a new chipset. But all of this doesn't really matter in 2020. This processor is 10 years old, and the only question you really have to ask is, how does it perform today? And how much does it cost today? So I got my i7-870 on eBay for about $40. And immediately after I purchased it, I saw it on the local used market for $30. I'd say that's probably pretty typical about where this processor is selling, and I wouldn't really uh, purchase it for any more than that. The motherboard we got was a P55 chipset motherboard, and I also got that on eBay for around $50. Considering it's an older motherboard, there also weren't a lot of other P55 chipset motherboards on eBay. I'd say that's an okay price, although I do think it is a little bit expensive myself, but I'm not gonna complain too much because it's a working setup and uh, that's what we're gonna be going with. I also have eight gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz memory from Corsair that we're gonna be pairing with it. Like I said in my i7-2600 review, I do have 16 gigs of 2400 MHz DDR3 memory that I'd like to pair with these, but I think I'm just gonna separate all of those test results into its own separate review video in the future um, to see if higher memory speeds um, can breathe life into these older uh, i7 processors. But because I already had eight gigs of 1600 MHz memory results to go with. I'm just gonna stick with that throughout all of these uh, older i7 reviews that I'm gonna be doing. We're also gonna be pairing a GTX 980 Ti from EVGA with this uh, processor. And again, it's not the most powerful graphics card we could have paired with this, but it was the most powerful that I had available to me. And um, especially with this processor, you're gonna see that um, it was very underutilized. But regardless, let's see the results. All right, before the testing, I'm gonna have to go over this again because a lot of people don't like this method. Um, but we're gonna be testing at two resolutions today. We're gonna be testing at 1080p and 720p. The reason we're testing at 720p is just to lower the strain on the graphics card to sp so it can spit out more frames and that then stresses out the CPU to try to keep up with it. Um, the method works if you used 4K and 1080p because a lot of people have problems playing at 720p because it's such a low resolution. I understand that, but the methodology is the same and uh, it, it goes to show how performance is when you are not graphically limited by your graphics card anymore. Apex Legends is gonna be our first game and with the late 2019 update on the highest settings at 1080p, we got an average FPS of 84 with a 1% low of 50. At 720p, our average in increased to 94, but our 1% load stayed uh, around 50 at 51. The difference here is really just the drop zone. Apex Legends is an online only game, so uh, again, we're gonna have a lot of variables here, and I actually play the matches in the Battle Royale game, so the difference here is really just about the variables that were in place. We may have had less people in our lobby, less people dropped at the same location that we did. Um, I may have looked up at the sky a little bit more, but the percentage differences between the i7-870 and the 2600 is what we want to look at. Um, and that's just one generational difference here, and it's a good 20 to 30% better uh, going from the 870 to the 2600, which is a pretty crazy increase from one generation. Battlefield 1 is the newest Battlefield game that I have. Um, the CEO of DICE said that if you didn't like Battlefield 5, don't buy it, so I didn't. And at ultra settings at 1080p, we got an average FPS of 80 with a 1% low of 54, and at 720p, we got basically the same results. Um, here you can see what a CPU bottleneck looks like. We are basically capped in this game at 80 FPS, and the 1% load stayed super close to 60. I didn't notice it dropping down, you know, 5 FPS below 60. Um, but seriously, look at the generational gap here. It's 20 to 30 FPS, and that is pretty insane. Um, you just don't see generational gaps like that anymore. Um, but we are definitely CPU bottlenecked in this title. CSGO is up next, and at the highest settings at 1080p, our 870 got an average FPS of 164 with a 1% low of 65. 
at 720p we got basically the same results our one percent low did go up to 71 though um, and that is most likely just due to the giant dip that comes from fl uh, flying through a smoke bomb where the alpha effects really take over the screen and that part is definitely GPU bottlenecked. You can see we were getting about the same results um, at 1080p with the 2600K. So most likely lowering those alpha effects down to 720p resolution uh, flying through the smoke is what helped out in that moment. But for the average FPS, we are still majorly CPU bottleneck compared to the 2600. I mean, that generational gap right there is pretty insane to see. Devil May Cry 5 at highest settings at 1080p got an average FPS of 88 with a 1% low of 56. And at 720p, again, we got pretty much the same result as 1080p. Uh, you might start to see a pattern here where um, it doesn't matter 1080p or 720p, we are bottlenecked and we're gonna be getting very, very similar results. Uh, in each and uh, again looking at the generational gap between the 870 and the 2600 um, that is a very convincing win right there even for the one percent lows it's almost the average of the 870. So Fortnite with the late 2019 update on the highest settings at 1080p got an average FPS of 92 with a one percent low of 42 and at 720p we got an average FPS of 103 and a one percent low of 51. So again, just like Apex, this really is dependent on the lobby and there's a lot of variances here. We dropped in a different location. We could have had less players in our lobby. We could have had less players land near us. I could have looked up at the sky a little bit more. That's the difference you see uh, going from 1080p to 720p with the 870. So we really wanna pay attention to the percentage differences between the 870 and the 2600. And again, it stays around that 20-ish percent increase uh, going from the 870 to the 2600. So um, yeah, it's pretty convincing that the 2600 is a fantastic upgrade over the 870. And looking at the 1% lows as well, we weren't even close to 60 to be honest. So that's something that you do feel um, when you're actually playing the game is going from 92 FPS down to 42 for maybe a stutter or maybe just turning around really quickly and it's got to load something. Um, that's a noticeable um, hitch there and uh, that's going to affect your, your actual gameplay experience. Halo Reach Master Chief Collection uh, on the enhanced settings at 1080p got an average FPS of 80 with a 1% low of 47. 720p was an average FPS of 77 with a 1% low of 49. I was actually surprised that we got such a lower FPS uh, with just this one title. This game runs on basically a toaster, um, but I'm assuming that this processor is missing some possible instructions um, or something that newer processors have in them uh, because that difference in FPS is pretty insane. That is almost 50 FPS. Um, you're basically doubling your performance just getting a 2600 over the 870. Rocket League at the highest settings at 1080p got an average FPS of 196 with a 1% low of 121. And at 720p we got 170 average FPS with a 1% low of 100. Again, online match. So there's a lot of different variants. We got a different map and uh, that definitely affects the performance like we saw with the i7-2600 when we tested that. So we're just looking at percentage differences here between the 870 and the 2600. And again, it's still hovering around that 20-ish percent difference. Um, so it, you know, it's a pretty big penalty going from the 2600 to the 870. And the 1% lows stayed above 100, which is nice, but still you're losing out a lot of, on a lot of performance um, when the 2600 is pretty close in the pricing. All right, The Witcher 3 at the highest settings at 1080p got an average FPS of 68 with a 1% low of 40, and at 720p we got basically the same thing. And uh, just looking at the percentage differences here from the 870 to the 2600, you're looking at 20 to 30% uh, increase going from the 870 to the 2600. So it's been pretty steady throughout the games tested that it's about a 20% difference in performance in gaming and uh, you definitely want to stay away from the 870 it looks like uh, if you're just doing actual gaming and in the Witcher we we weren't even close to staying 
uh, around 60 for the 1% low. And again, that's something you're going to feel when you're playing because it's a big difference uh, between 40 and 68 FPS. And when you dip below 60, you start to feel a little bit of stuttering uh, with your mouse movements. And lastly, we have Cinebench. Uh, the i7-2600 got 1432 and the i7-870 today got 1024, so that is a 40% increase uh, in the raw CPU power that you can get. And again, that one generation difference adds up quite a bit. So very interesting to see how much improvement they made in just one generation going from the first consumer i7 to the second gen. Uh, consumer i7. So, as you can tell from those results, this processor is 100% the bottleneck in our system. Would I suggest this combination in 2020? Definitely not. If you got it for free or if you got it for $20 or $30, it's pretty good for that price. But for close to $100, which is what I paid for it, I can't justify that on a dead platform. If you want anything better than an i7-870, you have to replace the motherboard. And for $100, you can get a much better used AMD Ryzen system and have the option to upgrade to a 3000 series or 4000 series processor and gain so much more performance. We were barely struggling to hit 60 FPS in some of these games. So again, for the price, I can't justify it. But I can justify it for this video because I really enjoyed getting this content to you guys. And I'm gonna enjoy more content that I'm gonna be making on older i7s. So you wanna stay tuned for that. I'm in the process of getting a 3770K in office to test, and I already have a 4790K waiting to be tested as well. So if you liked today's video, hit like, hit subscribe if you want more content from us in the future, and tap the bell icon if you want notifications when we launch those new videos. Thanks for watching, guys.